Hi there. In this lecture we see Afim Bogolodjabal against Capablanca. So Bogolodjabal has been winning some tournaments sometimes ahead of Capablanca, a brilliant tournament player, but not so much relatively strong as a match player because there's giants around. And if he's playing like Capablanca or Alicon in a match, he's quite likely to lose. But in a tournament, he's quite an ambitious, aggressive player and can pick up points against lesser rated players that the likes of Capablanca or Alcon might not. So he's often winning tournaments. So a great player. D4 from Bogolodjabal. We have knight f6, c4, e6. Knight f3, b6. So a queen's engine defense by Capablanca. Knight c3, bishop b7. So the hypermodern ideals are reflected in Capablanca's play here. Just control the center from afar. You don't literally have to occupy it all the time with d5. Just controlling that e4 square with the bishop and knight here. We have bishop g5, bishop e7, unpinning there, e3, and now knight e4. We have bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, knight d2, and the bishop drops back, bishop e2, and now an aggressive move actually. Queen g5. White does best not to castle here. <laughs> that would be mistake. 2,000 minus points, minus 2,000. That would be checkmate. So we have bishop f3. That's taken. Queen takes f3. And now knight c6. Queen g3 is played. For those curious about d5, this doesn't help white. Can white bust open this diagonal? Is that dangerous? Actually, black can play e takes here. This seems to be the strongest, the knight b4. So there's a threat of knight c2 check as well as that pawn being vulnerable. Well, it's best might be queen e4 check to hit the knight. Black can respond with queen e7, and we could have a kind of repetition draw here with this annoying check. If we look at this sequence again, why is this an ideal sequence? Okay, let's look at it again. If knight b4 queen e4 check this position if queen takes c5 is played then black is actually better because d5 is hanging then there's a threat of knight c2 check if king e2 yeah we're just taking d5 out big advantage yeah so uh that's no good and here if you know castling you know knight takes d5 advantage to black if we look at this again um yeah the only problem is if if black doesn't uh, take on d5, then sure, uh, you know, this is actually a problem. If what if black plays knight e5, queen e4 is strong. Can you see the threat here white would have? So it's not just maintaining this kind of threat, but also this new one, 4 is a threat here. As well as this, you know, to hit the rook. So this is actually bad for black. If queen f5, this position, uh, white has a small edge there. And if queen f5 isn't played, say casting f4 that's clear enough or if uh, knight g6 then indeed we have this threat against the rook so that's uh, that's diabolical winning that rook or if castling this is also diabolical if rook takes queen takes so if king takes this is just horrible you know but yeah it seems as though the key the key trick is e takes d5 first and uh, you know that'll be fine it's it's causing a you know a clog uh, on this diagonal so d5 causes a clog on the diagonal otherwise indeed you know there's an immediate kind of idea of opening up the diagonal even if knight c2 is threatened the king could move and we're still on you know queen takes a8 to win another rook after or in fact to be more pedantic and concrete about it knight c2 check king d1 so not only we're hitting the rook we're hitting c2 and in fact, if knight takes a1, what is the strongest move for white for 10 points? You know, look for an even strong move. Sometimes you've got a resource on e6. We can actually play queen takes f7 check and queen takes d7 checkmate there. And the thing is, if casting then e takes, if rook takes, then there's queen takes a8. And here we can even just indulge in taking the knight. So yes, that's all pretty bad that that kind of vividly shows there is some some bites of d5 but black does best for e takes okay 
but yeah with e takes d5 in fact this is very very nice it's at least equal rather if white plays queen e4 check it's at least equal okay so that settles queen g3 and we have the queens coming off and now Capablanca masterfully keeps the king in the center why castle the king very instructive moment if he castles the king well the king you know this is kind of an end game the king needs to be aggressive you know this position is only going to be you know about equal for example here it's about equal but the king is better off on e7 because this h file can be neutralized to some extent with a move like h6 to free the rook for example to go over here to try and generate some queenside counterplay so okay so the king's kept in the center g4 and now h6 so this frees up the rook otherwise h7 would drop if the rook moved there'll be rook takes h7 so if a5 is this so bad well g5 is kind of suppressing black on the h file this position is going to be you know just about even okay so it's nice that h6 is played we have a3 a6 so Capablanca is trying for some queenside counterplay we have king e2 with hp8 so not worried about the h pawn anymore so b5 trying to kind of nudge white into light square weaknesses there's already a light square weaknesses creeping in you know creep, creeping in with a3 we have knight e4 which is actually an inaccuracy it seems if b3 maybe this is slightly more solid if b5 c5 with the knight still on d2 this should be an even position here but knight e4 yeah it loosens the position a little bit with that knight being a kind of tactical target to hit with tempo even though you know it might have ideas of g5 to support g5 it does seem an inaccuracy we have b5 c5 c takes here should be you know about equal this position but with c5 okay now we do have this knight hit c takes d6 check if knight g3 black can get the edge with b4 and for example here black's doing you know very nicely with that backward b pawn to torture if we look at this again with a4 b3 is good actually because we have a kind of hook we can use that c2 hook so for example knight h5 g5 and we can actually go in here even if we lose h6 this is rather dangerous for white if here then that neglects the you know the a4 pawn overall this is actually better for black yeah otherwise you know it's kind of nasty to allow rook c2 check is this is quite nasty scenarios so okay so c takes d6 is played check c takes f4 rook c8 f5 knight a5 and now king d3 knight c4 and here i would say this this looks like a critical mistake actually rook a b1 even though you know black does have a dangerous you know dangerous counterplay on the queen side sometimes if we're in such positions with white which we might be perhaps it's good to think of the dog and its bark and its bite we want the bark to be you know worse than the bite so how do we do that in chess terms we don't want to have tactical liabilities the opponent could concretely exploit i.e bite us with we don't want to present tactical liabilities and this move seems to do that it presents tactical liabilities so the dog's bite is going to be you know worse than the bite uh, worse than the bark if if instead b3 here's an example b3 it's intact the queen side is largely intact and you see this in games of bobby fisher you know his queen side's often quite solid for quite a while when he's playing for example the king's engine systems the queen side is largely intact there's a d5 tactic move knight c5 knight e5 white can play like this and live to tell the tale it seems there isn't that much to play for a win here it's about even so that is a kind of delicate move b3 if we look at knight a5 if white wants to just draw this you know with rook fb1 it seems you know rook c7 to build up doubling rooks but it can be interrupted with rook c1 that's the key point here 
And if rook takes, rook takes. If knight takes, you know, there's there's check. And look, d6 is weak. King f8, knight takes, d6, white's winning. So this isn't that easy after b3, it seems. By all evidence, this wouldn't be that easy. If knight a5, this position, you know, this, as, as mentioned, you know, th this position, yeah, as mentioned, is okay, for, you know, better for white. And rook a c8, taking, taking, and taking, taking rook b1. Where is the bite here? <laughs> We're quite simplified here. Where is the bite? No. So, unfortunately, Boglodjabal played rook a b1. Now, there are some problems here. g4 is an unprotected pawn, a potential tactical liability. This is a potential tactical liability. I know the king's in the center. You might think useful for end games, but it is a potential tactical liability as well. And not only that, this knight becomes a tactical liability because after d5, knight c3, you can imagine this is like a Sicilian defense theme. Doubling rooks means that either knight takes b2 is something to look out to undermine the knight with rook takes c3 or knight takes a3. This is a standard Sicilian defense theme. That's one of the big points of having an outpost on a semi open file. It can lead to tactical, you know, damage to the opponent. And this is a big problem. This isn't as solid as what we've seen before. If knight c5, e5 is possible. And this position, e4 check, and rook a7, this is quite comfortable for black. Different story. It's it's kind of unfortunate for black. I mean, sorry, unfortunate for white, this position. Black's doing really well here. So knight c3, this is a tactical liability adding to the orchestra of tactical liabilities. There's three key liabilities here. Rook c6 simply aiming to double rooks and, and play knight takes b2 as the key threat, let alone knight takes a3. So that is an undeminable piece. We see f takes, f takes are now a desperate looking g5. Yeah, it does look desperate. If rook he1, you know, black just builds up. So threatening knight takes b2, it's like a Sicilian defense position. Black's doing really well here. But g5 is desperate, h takes, rook h5. This is easily answered with Cavalier's king f6. We have rook h3. If rook f1 checks, so what? We just play king g6. And here knight takes b2 check for free. So rook h3, we have building up, threatening knight takes b2 check. What's happened here, to carry on the dog metaphor, <laughs> the dog's bite is starting to be a lot worse than its bark. So I think this is the key lesson from this game. Oh dear, it was positionally miserable, sure. But you know, when you play, the, play those pesky juniors nowadays, you know, you might be thinking you're positionally torturing them, but they seem to have things tactically under control. That's that's a good thing. Maybe it's, it's the product of being emotionally resilient to what looks visually crushing. Try and think of the dog. Try and say, well, okay, the dog looks like some vicious dog, but can I make sure its bite is not that painful? Can I make sure, it, okay, it's got a loud bark, I can, I can tolerate that, but a bite's going to hurt. This is going to hurt now. This is going to hurt white. We have knight a2, a5. This is going to hurt now. Rook f3 check, king g6, g4, knight d6. Now, why is this going to hurt, you ask? Well, there's plans afoot just to checkmate the king in the center. <laughs> so Kevin Blanca loves giving the advice of keeping the king in the center, especially to his opponents, who kind of maybe use that too routinely sometimes. Sometimes the king in endgames can be mated as well. There's there's a plot here. It depends who has control of the position. King safety can be a major issue for your king in endgames, if, especially in this kind of position. You know, we're controlling escape squares. The usual art of checkmate applies here. So we see knight c3. If rook f2 then actually black can make progress on this side of the board, uh, as, or both sides of the board. For example, this position can make inroads on both sides of the board with e3 being an issue. So this this kind of thing with, with white just totally tied up. And the tactics uh, are just wonderful here. For example, this position, if king takes d5, rook takes f1, knight takes e3 check, forking everything in sight. So anyway, knight c3 was played. We have b4, a takes, a takes, knight d1. 
rook c2 yeah this is getting nasty you can see that black is threatening knight e4 and rook d2 chat mating rook f2 is played trying to parry things it's too too little too late b3 now is played white is white's had it rook a1 if rook takes c2 b takes forks and then we just queen you know it's over so rook a1 knight e4 and we have rook e2 and now you know the mating net is being struck constructed here rook eight to c6 rook b1 and now e5 this is super cute so you might think what's going on here rook a1 is played if d takes e5 in fact can you can you see what black plays here to try and checkmate the king yeah the art of checkmate we can take away an escape square which means that this check is much much more effective along with other checks potentially but knight c5 is a mate threat there and if rook takes rook takes there's no escape here to rook d2 if king d4 then rook d2 funny enough is checkmate yeah so this mate net's being woven whatever happens so rook a1 is played and we have rook six to c4 now so guess what the threat is here for mating the white king after rook a5 it's actually still played it out the same threat is played out what do you think that is for 100 tactical points yeah knight c5 check ends the game if rook takes c5 then qt e4 chat bait otherwise if if yeah so that is chat bait there and if rook takes c5 that's still you know uh, a chat mate there e4 so yes this e4 chat mate is pretty annoying <laughs> it's pretty annoying yes so that ends the game it's it's actually one of tigram chosen's favorite games and um yeah it's it's interesting it's very very nice to see the logic of the winner Capablanca has mentioned that you know when analyzing games see the logic in tick for the winner let that pervade you let that penetrate you so you can get the logic of the winner but also you know sometimes what if we want to try and defend positional players try and you know minimize the number of tactical liabilities by doing that that is reducing the bite of the dog the do the, the bark might be loud and annoying but it's not totally gonna like hurt us it's the tactical liabilities which hurt us so you know there is a key moment if we're actually kind of critical with modern engines what is the key moment moment which took white off the edge you know of the board and you know it's it's earlier it's this moment not to kind of keep as solid as possible this is a key consideration for queen sides in general you know to keep as solid as possible so rook ab1 does seem to be you know white's completely going down the hill after this move and it is beautiful the logic of intensifying the pressure on the c file and constructing you know the mating net around the king it is truly beautiful so bog lodger you know outplayed he's been overshadowed unfortunately by the likes of you know Cavablanca and alakine his tournament results you know are even more impressive than them than the, the, those guys on occasion he has had his fair share of tournament victories but in matches unfortunately you know Bogolodger Bauer has been overshadowed so it's an interesting character that I might actually consider a future course about well his tournament wins you know to show that dynamic aggressive play and you know how is he crushing those low rated players you know that is a, that is an interesting thing but here yeah it's just going downhill against Cavablanca here unfortunately this is uh you know this this looks excre extremely you know this could have been considered straight off the bat as well uh potentially but it, there was a build-up you know preventing rook a6 so that's much more you know safety conscious uh then you then we want e5 installed basically and then we want the rook there so it's this big threat of e4 mating it's this pawn that's actually doing the mating so yeah if we went rook six to c4 the snag would be rook a6 for example pinning that pawn 
to the king. I mean, let's put that on the board. So we need, you know, the pawn on e5 to be a mating resource. Once it's on e5, it's a mating resource. And here, as mentioned, you know, just to recap here of takes, then we then we close off the escape square of the king, the d4, threatening knight c5 checkmate. And yeah, it's too little, too late here for white. White's getting mated either way. You know, knight c3, and there's rook d2. So the mechanics of this checkmate is actually, it's actually rather sweet in my view as well. The positional play is sweet. The mating, the art of mating is sweet as well. No wonder it's one of Petrosian's favourite games. <laughs> it's a game Petrosian would have liked to have played himself. Wouldn't we all like to play this game ourselves? It is beautiful positional play. And, you know, it also has some potential lessons for, for the defender. If you're being, uh, you know, positioning, you know, the onslaught, try and minimise the tactical liabilities as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Got some interesting points for both sides. Thanks very much.